Welcome to your first AP Calculus BC OSSM Ardmore video. The first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about just my general expectations in the classroom, what I expect out of my students, how I want your homework to look, how we run the classroom, again, generally what my expectations are. So that's why I just call this general housekeeping instructions for your calculus class. The first thing is that I intend for you to show up to class every day ready to learn calculus and ready to work. Every day you need to bring a three ring binder, paper, a couple of pencils, never come to class without your calculator. There are many days we will not use your calculator, but there are some days where we will use your calculator. So make sure to bring it with you every day to class. Anything else that you like in order to take notes or in order to do homework with, whatever else you think you will need, bring it to class every day. Now let's talk about the first thing on the list. Let's talk about your textbook. You will be issued a textbook. By and large, I don't follow the textbook too terribly closely. The textbook is a college textbook. It follows along basic derivatives and then basic integrals and then goes into higher order stuff from there. What we're preparing for is not necessarily a college class for Calculus 1 and 2, but the AP Calculus test, which is a different animal completely. So you will get the majority of your information directly from me through these homework videos. Your textbook is going to become a supplement. So I do not care if you bring your textbook with you to class every day or not. If you think it is an asset that you will use and that you will need, by all means bring it. If not, leave it at home. Uh, we will still cover it. We will still take care of it. We'll talk about that the first day of class. But you don't necessarily have to drag that textbook to class every single day. Homework will begin promptly as soon as the bell rings. At the beginning of each class period, for morning class, for AM class, the bell rings at 8.15. For PM class, the bell rings at 12.45. At those times, I expect my students to already be in the classroom, already in their seat, already have their notes that they took over the previous night's videos, opened and in front of them and they have already reviewed them and they're here early enough prior to the bell ringing to ask any questions about homework we may have done the previous day and didn't quite get finished during class. All of those things happen before the bell rings. The time that we have in class together, those 80 minutes, are spent working homework problems on the new concepts that we learned from the videos the night before. Uh, it's all we can do to get everything done in the time period that we have. The moral to that story is if you're an AM student, I would expect to see you at 8 or 8.05 so that you're ready to start the new information when the bell rings at 8.15. The same for PM students. I would expect to see you at 12.30 or 12.45. Do not be late to class. You will be in your seat with your notes open and available for you to reference and your pencil and notebook paper ready to begin working on the homework problems before the bell rings. So you have to arrive early. That's when we ask questions about prior homework problems if we weren't able to finish them the day before. Here is the format for your calculus homework. This is what I want it to look like. I have to grade a lot of homework throughout the school year, so I'm pretty particular about where things are on the page. Your homework problems must be listed down the page, not across the page. I want homework problems listed in columns because I stack your papers as I grade them. I realize homework is participation only, but I do look at your homeworks not only to make sure they're complete, but to make sure you are on the right track. You definitely can use the back of the paper. I'm not a stickler about that, but the homework problems, again, must be in columns, not in rows. Don't mix up your homework problems. Don't start with number three and then jump to number five and then jump to number one. They need to be in order because I stack them and I grade more than one homework at a time. 
Your name and that particular homework number must be in the upper right hand corner on the front of the page. I don't want it across the top. I don't want it in the left hand corner. I don't want it at the bottom. I want your name. It's perfectly fine just to put your first name and the homework number in the upper right hand corner on every homework. Because I stack these papers and because I grade more than one at a time, I don't want to have the fringe fight. So you must tear off any fringes. If you have a spiral notebook, tear all the fringes off that paper. I won't accept the homework that has fringes on it. When you tear them off, as you will probably do right before they're due because you forget the night before, then you clean up your mess. I don't want to come in here at the end of the class period and have fringes all over the desk. I'm your teacher, not your mother. I'm not going to clean up after you, so clean up your mess, but don't ever turn in a homework that has the fringes on it. It is your responsibility to access the course outline for the homework, to know which homework that is going to be done in class the following day, and to see which videos, what the names of the videos are that you're supposed to watch any particular evening. That's your responsibility. I gave you a copy of the course outline, which won't change by much, when we had our parent night back in May. You need to pull that out and you need to double check that and compare it with the course outline that's posted in ICAT. So every evening before you watch your video, you or your videos, look on the course outline that's posted in ICAT because if there are any changes to the timeline and what's due and what we're going to be doing, it will be on that course outline. The one that I gave you back in May is just for a loose reference of what you can expect for us to do. It is your responsibility to know when you have exams. You have multiple weekly quizzes and they must be completed by the end of each week. If you are going to miss an exam or if you miss a quiz, it is your responsibility as a college student to come and find me in my office and make arrangements to make that up. It is your responsibility to notify me as soon as you see a conflict in your schedule, especially if you're going to miss an exam. Never, ever, ever miss an exam for a planned absence. You must notify me of the situation and make sure I write down the date that you are going to be gone in my planner. I have more than just you to keep up with. I have several students to keep up with and your schedules are going to get crazy, especially in the spring semester. So that's why I write everything down in my planner. If it's not written in my planner, we didn't have the discussion. So according to your syllabus, special accommodations for making up exams are only for emergency situations. Now, let me be clear, a planned school event like band or singing or uh, theater, whatever it is, a vacation, a college day, a scholastic meet, all of these things are not emergency situations. All of these things you will be notified of long before you have to go and do them. As soon as you are notified, you need to look at your course outline. If those absences are going to be on an exam day, you better come talk to me ASAP. Now, number one, if you're going to miss class period for a planned school event or some other planned personal event, you need to let me know just outright that you're going to be gone. But if it is, on an exam day, you better make sure to get to me fast so that we can make a plan for having you make up that exam that you missed. Again, I want to be abundantly clear. See how this is bold and underlined? If you don't see me write it in my planner, you didn't tell me about it. Whether we did or not, whether we had the discussion or not, unless you saw me write it in my planner, we didn't because that's where I'm used to looking for those absences. We will work calculus homework together at the board whenever we can. I call it warm bodies to the board. We've been doing warm bodies to the board in my classroom for 10 years. Students hate it at first. It, it, you're very vulnerable. You have to work your math right in front of God and everybody. And there's probably going to be somebody else in the classroom that can work it better and faster than you. So what? We're learning. This is what learning looks like. I'm going to get you out of your comfort zone so that we can use our, all of our assets, even our classmates, to help us understand and master these concepts. You will, very shortly after you get through the uncomfortable part of it at first, 
you'll come to love it because you'll understand the more we do together in the classroom, the less you do alone at home. So be prepared for warm bodies to the board. Please also understand that I am available to help you outside of class time. I want to help you. I'm begging to help you. I don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to get so frustrated that you want to quit. Please call me. Please come into my office and set up a time where we can meet one-on-one. -on -one. I can help you if you're struggling with something. I can help you probably in five or ten minutes get a much clearer vision of it than you trying to do that on your own. Let's keep your frustration level as low as we possibly can. And by all means, please don't let one concept on top of another on top of another keep you confused because then that's a big hole we've got to fill in. So as soon as you feel a little off kilter and a little unsure, that's when you need to call me or come to me and we'll sit down and talk it through until you have a better handle on it. Make an appointment to meet me before school, at lunch, after school. I have uh, football players every year that can't meet with me during football season until after 8 o'clock at night. That's fine. I'll meet you then. Whatever it is, according to your schedule, within reason, I want to make sure that you get this information at a mastery level. So I'm happy to meet with you and clarify anything that you might not have picked up the first time we went through it. Understand, it is my attitude and my position that learning is an activity. It is an active event, not a passive event. Learning takes time and effort. It is not about taking up volume in my classroom. If you think that what has worked for you in the past, which is just showing up, listening to the lecture, and then regurgitating what you were, were taught is going to work for you at this level, it's not. Mastery takes more time and effort than any learning that you've ever done before, trust me. So please pick up the phone and call me. Please make arrangements you know, for some time for us to meet in my office. If you call me, my husband lives on the phone, please leave a message. Sometimes I'm terrible about charging my cell phone. So if you call my cell phone and leave a message and I haven't called you back shortly, call my home phone again. My husband's always on that phone, so leave me a message. Please don't call after nine o'clock. My husband starts to growl when the phone rings after repeatedly with students after nine o'clock at night. So the moral to that is start calculus early. Start your videos early. If they're confusing, you can call me. If we didn't finish homework that day in class, uh, start to work on homework early. Uh, and if you need help, then you can call me before nine o'clock. But don't call me after nine o'clock because I don't want to hear my husband growl. The concepts will be taught at a college level, at a college pace, and with college expectations. So the only aspect in which I will treat you as a high school student is when it comes to safety. You cannot come and go as you please. Once you're on this campus, you have to stay on this campus for the required hours that you're supposed to be here. When it comes to safety, I treat you basically like a second grader more than a high school student because you're on my watch and nothing's gonna happen to you on my watch. In every other aspect, I treat you as a college student. So let me be abundantly clear, college students are adults. They are personally responsible. They know when they need to go get help and they do it. So I don't want to hear any high school excuses. Your high school excuses are not going to work for me. If you're used to playing four hours of videos a day when you go home after school and you no longer get to do the four hours, it's cut down to two hours and you feel like your life is, you know, ending. I'm sorry, you signed up for a college class. This is how it's going to work. You will be given instructions or directives from me only once. And I will hold you individually responsible for meeting all the assigned work that's given, all the quiz and exam deadlines, any quiz and exam prep without repeated high school reminders from me. If you can meet all of those expectations, you and I will get along just fine this year. So there's your first AP Calculus video. The following videos will obviously cover math content, but now you'll be able to come to class the first day and know what my expectations are.